Tage Thompson was once a throw-in prospect in the Ryan O'Reilly trade. But this season, Tage is proving that he is an elite goal scorer. Position on that one to make a play on it. Thompson with the giveaway. Here's a chance in front. Oh, what a goal by Tage Thompson! TNT blows it up. Down low in the Tampa zone, and the Sabres are on the board. Bloomer is a player who didn't contribute a lot until later in their career, or a player who didn't become a real prospect until later. And with Tage Thompson's emergence, I wanted to look back on other examples of NHL late bloomers. Come on, Chelios, you old fuck skate! Chris Chelios is one of the best NHL defensemen of all time, playing from 1984 to 2010 and putting up over 900 career points. But Chelios was once a small college kid who was cut from the only team that offered a scholarship out of high school. Chelios was born in Chicago but moved to California and grew up as a pretty good player. But he was too small, standing at only 5'7", 150 pounds. But he was offered to play at United States International College. If you don't know what that place is, neither do I. Apparently it was a college based in San Diego, and the worst part for Chelios is after he went to USIU, he was cut from the team. Chelios decided to try his luck in Canada, playing for multiple B-tier junior teams before being cut by them. Chelios hit a low point in his life as he had to beg strangers for money so he could get back home. He had a major choice in his life, quit hockey and get a normal job, or work even harder and try to play anywhere he was allowed. Chelios chose the latter, and it worked out for him. Chelios grew 4 inches and gained 40 pounds of muscle, and returned to the juniors playing in the Saskatchewan Junior Hockey League for the Moose Jaw Canucks. He was elite. Chelios tallied 87 points in just 57 games, proving that he was an elite defenseman, and was reinforced as such when he was selected by the Montreal Canadiens in the 1981 NHL Draft in the second round. Chelios didn't go to the NHL right away, however as he played for the Wisconsin Badgers in the NCAA where he further proved he was great, even winning an NCAA Hockey Championship. In 1984, Chelios fully made the Canadiens roster and was an all-star, all-rookie and was second in Calder voting behind the great Mario Lemieux. Chelios won a Stanley Cup with Montreal in 1986, but he really broke out in 1989. Chelios won the Norris Trophy as the best defender in the league with 73 points and a plus-minus of 35. Only two years later, Chelios and a second was swapped for Denny Savard. Chelios would become the best defenseman in the league in Chicago, winning two more Norse trophies and making 12 straight All-Star games before being dealt to De Detroit, where Chelios would become a lesser star, but allowing him to play for 11 more years. Chelios would go on to win two more Stanley Cups with Detroit while still playing at a high level. In fact, Chelios has the record for most playoff games with 248. But by 2008, he was really only playing in the AHL, and in 2010, after a very brief stint with the Thrashers, Chelios officially retired. Chelios finished his career as one of the best defensemen of all time and on the NHL's 100 Greatest Players list. McCrory, Chris Drury moves in shot, saved by Thomas, one of the most spectacular saves of the season, Tim Thomas going across the goal line. Tim Thomas has possibly the most inspiring and craziest story in NHL history as he made his debut at 28 years old. Thomas grew up in Flint, Michigan and went to the University of Vermont where he was drafted by the Quebec Nordiques. Thomas decided to play at Vermont with another future NHL star who we'll get to in a little bit. At Vermont, Thomas put up elite numbers, leading them to a 1996 NCAA Frozen Four appearance. After college, Thomas briefly played in the ECHL and IHL before going to SM Liga in Finland. Thomas led his team to an SM Liga championship, and for the next five years, Thomas would bounce between North American minor leagues and European leagues. Thomas was signed by the Providence Bruins, who are the AHL affiliate for Boston. In 2002, Thomas was finally able to get a shot in the NHL at the age of 28, but it didn't last long. Thomas would be sent down to the minors after only four games and played in Providence through the next season. In 2005, during the NHL lockout, Thomas returned to Europe and put up even better stats. Luckily for Thomas, the Bruins re-signed him, and at the start of the 2005-2006 season, the 31-year-old was finally able to stand the roster. But he was the third goalie behind the previous Calder winner in Andrew Raycroft and Hanu Toivonen. Due to injuries, however, Thomas became the Bruins starter and played up very good stats with a 917 save percentage and a 2.77 goals against average. 
During the 2006 offseason, Raycroft was traded to Toronto, but even then, Thomas was still not the starter, as Boston named Toivonen. But due to Toivonen's poor performance early in the season, Thomas was given a real shot at being the starter. He was, okay, putting up average numbers, and his career was yet again put into question as Boston would trade for Manny Fernandez from the Minnesota Wild, and once again, Thomas would be a backup. Fernandez would get injured early in the season, and Thomas, knowing it was his last chance to be a starter, would prove everybody wrong, as he'd make his first All-Star game and have a 921 save percentage and a 2.44 goals against average. This would be nothing, as Thomas would come back the next year and win the Vesna as the best goaltender in the NHL at the age of 34 years old with a 933 save percentage and a 2.10 goals against average. But then he'd come back two years later and won the Vesna again along with the Stanley Cup. Thomas would win the Consmite Trophy as the playoff MVP. Thomas would have one more elite year with Boston before confusingly taking a year off from hockey before returning and having a pretty average year with Florida and Dallas. Thomas retired after that season, but he did have one of the best peaks of any goaltender ever. Moved it up the wall, Pelomar went down, Taylor the shot, redirected, SCORE! Game 7, Martin St. Louis! We are going back to Tampa Bay! 33 seconds into the double overtime! His first shot of the game, gets the rebound, put it up top. Martin St. Louis was Tim Thomas's teammate at the University of Vermont. St. Louis was always a great player, but struggled to gain recognition due to him being only 5'8". No NHL team selected him in any draft, however, so St. Louis decided to play at Vermont. St. Louis would become an immediate star, as he'd help Vermont to the Frozen Four while being a Hobie Baker finalist. St. Louis would gain interest from multiple NHL teams after his junior season, but he decided to play his final year at Vermont. This would be a bad decision at the time, as St. Louis would get injured and have a bad season. After his college career, St. Louis signed with the Cleveland Lumberjacks of the IHL, where he played for two seasons before signing with the Calgary Flames in 1998. St. Louis struggled to find his place in the NHL at first, and he was eventually waived by the Flames in 2000. But he didn't let that setback stop him. He signed with Tampa Bay, and it was there that he truly made his mark on the league. In his first season with the Lightning, St. Louis scored 70 points and was one of the NHL's most improved players, but he was just getting started. Over the course of the next several years, St. Louis became one of the most dominant players in the league. He won the Art Ross Trophy twice in 2004 and 2013 as the NHL's leading scorer, and won the Hart Trophy in 2004 as the league's MVP. He also led the Lightning to a Stanley Cup victory in 2004 and was a key player for Canada in 2014, where he won a gold medal in the Olympics. St. Louis played for the Lightning until 2014, when he was traded to the New York Rangers. He played for the Rangers for little over a year before announcing his retirement in 2015. In his retirement announcement, St. Louis said that he was proud of his career and that he was excited to see what the future held for him. He was a player who proved size doesn't matter when it comes to hockey and inspired countless young players to pursue their dreams. And he may have even inspired a player who plays under him in Montreal today. Pass for Caulfield, trying to get it in, Jordan, scores! Another beauty! 